So I'm, uh, uh, well, I'm Glyn Ford. I'm, uh, I was a member of the European Parliament for 25 years, uh, representing the British Labour Party, and I specialised on trade and foreign affairs, particularly in Northeast Asia. And so I ended up going to uh, North Korea for the first time in 1997 when they came to see me to talk about trying to get European food aid. And since then I've uh, actually been there on more than well, almost 50 occasions. And so uh, I know the country fairly well, for, certainly for a European. And uh, I wrote a book on it about 10 years ago and I've got another one coming out uh, in September. I mean, f firstly let me say it's clear that the, the situation, the crisis on the peninsula is going to be solved by fundamentally two, two different pairs of countries. Mm -hmm. uh, with the issue of denuclearization, it's going to be between Washington and Pyongyang, fundamentally. In terms of North-South relations, it's Seoul and Pyongyang. So those are the key players. Uh, you've also got, uh, in, in, in the region, you've got China, you've got Russia, you've got Japan. Uh, but it seems to me that whatever the kind of solution is going to be, it's probably one that needs a broad, uh, some support. Uh, it will need support from all over the world. Uh, if we look at the agreed framework, uh, the European Union was part of the, the Cato project. And it seems to me that th this solution will require what I call guarantors and donors. Uh, the, the deal with Iran uh, obviously is in trouble at the moment because of uh, President Trump's decision to abrogate the deal. But what's interesting is that it's, it, it's got some, it still exists because it has support from a series of other countries, from the UN Security Council, from the United Kingdom, France, Germany, the European Union, Russia, China. So it seems to me that any deal we get now in terms of security could probably do with the same kind of support because I don't think really a letter from President Trump, or for that matter any other president, is enough. So I think you need a framework. And I see the European Union has been part of that framework. Secondly, we also need donors, because I think it's very clear that any settlement is likely to have something, some equivalent of the, of the Cato project attached to it. Now, the bulk of that money will be paid by South Korea. But last time round, Japan, the European Union, made a contribution. So I see that financial contribution as well. And lastly, uh, in a sense, there may be a political role to play, because certainly uh, North Korea has actually said that they're willing to have a human rights dialogue with the European Union again. They offered that sort of in 2014. So it may be that one of the openings that at the moment is rather missing is to get that human rights dialogue going, and the European Union might be able to do that. So it might have its, its own small contribution to play. Uh, the, the, fun, the, the heavy lifting is going to be done by Seoul and Washington, but if we can help a little, we, we will be delighted to do so. Well, as I said, I mean, it's, in a sense, I'm going to repeat slightly what I've said before. I mean, it seems to me that uh, if you're going to have security guarantees, they, they need to be robust, they need to be resilient, they need to be supported. And uh, hopefully as many of those countries as possible will be willing to, to give their names to, to that kind of support to actually make the case uh, and, and to give, I mean, if North Korea is going to give up its nuclear weapons, it needs to have a degree of confidence. If it's got a nuclear deterrent, it can be 100% guaranteed it doesn't have a problem. I mean, in the sense of, uh, if, if you want uh, attempts at regime change, either overtly or covertly, at least that was its view. If it's going to give that up, it needs a replacement that's got some guarantees. And as I said, I think those need to be multinational. We always talk about CVID, uh, complete, verifiable, irreversible disarmament. I think Pyongyang wants complete, verifiable, irreversible security guarantees. And that will be, that, that, that will be the mirror image of what we're looking for in terms of the nuclear deterrent. Well, I mean, the China, uh, the China-US relationship is obviously a multi-dimensional one. I mean, at the moment, the two are working together rather well, as far as I can see, on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, actually rather, working rather badly together on trade issues. Uh, if it wasn't for 
China, the European Union would feel hard done by on trade issues, but as it is, China is suffering, suffering more. And of course, there are very different visions. Yes, uh, the United States, in a sense, is challenging China in the region with its new sort of Indo-Pacific sort of approach in China's, uh, if you want, well, both with its Belt and Road Initiative and the rest. But I mean, these are the natural things. The, these two major powers are trying to, if you want, project their power and their influence. And they're both doing it in slightly different ways. Well, I mean, I think the Jeju Forum, is, as far as I'm aware, has, uh, has played an important role in actually building a, a climate and an atmosphere uh, towards peace. I mean, Jeju's got its own uh, terrible history. So, uh, I mean, I understand where it's coming from, but it's exactly the kind of civil society in a sense that it has to promote this, has to push uh, the politicians and everybody else into to making the extra effort because it's not going to be easy. Uh, at the moment, we're all rather we're all rather positive. I, I, I remain positive. That doesn't mean to say there won't be difficult sections in the road ahead, uh, as we saw with the, if you want, the brief spat between John Bolton and Kim Gai Guan, uh, 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 which almost derailed the summit. So there are going to be tough times ahead, and we need people like the Jeju Forum to make sure we get, get over that and through that you know, to the ultimate end that we want to see. Well, I'm delighted to be here. It's only my second time ever on Jeju, so uh, yeah, yeah. please invite me back again. Don't, don't broadcast that. <laughs>